Hello everybody, welcome back to another Rockabilly guitar lesson. Almost in time for Elvis's birthday, another Elvis song for you, which is the flip side of his first single, which he recorded in the summer of 1954 for Sun Records, of course, with Bill Black on bass and Scotty Moore on guitar. And the song is called Blue Moon of Kentucky. I hope you like it and let's get right to it. Blue Moon of Kentucky is in the key of A and Scotty takes two lead guitar breaks in this one. But instead of showing you both solos, I, because they're pretty similar, I show you a condensed version with all the options and variations you can apply. So you start both solos here on the fifth fret. This is coming from your E shape, A chord, and you play the B and the G string with some slide. And he will also play the B and open E string here, yeah? or all three strings, so that gives you different sounds. Then the chord progression changes to D, and it plays something like this. He's just playing D chords, you know, changing from the A position or A uh, shape of the D chord here on the seventh fret, playing the G and the B string to the E shape, tenth and eleventh fret, again B and G string, and then uh, you could play the top three strings G, B, and E, and back to the B and G string or Back to the seventh fret. One more time. Or you could also play the D and the G string like this. So many options here. Yeah? And he, he does a lot of variations in the solo. So then back to A. Similar to the first time when he plays A, but at the end he goes to A minor, which will lead you to the E chord nicely. And this is a C shape here. One more time the A part. A minor, and then for E, same approach as for the D chord. just accents. And he starts with a G and B string, 4th and 5th fret, then B and E string, 7 and 9, and back to 4 and 5. And there's a difference in the timing between the D chord and the E chord. While he plays the accents for D on 1 and 3, like this, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. He plays uh, the accents for the E chord on two and four, like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So let's put everything together, what we got so far, and it sounds like this. back to A, and you could even emphasize the, the slides a little bit more. Something like that, yeah. Back to D. And at the end of the D part, he plays a B. So I'm not sure if it's on purpose or not, if you just forgot to take the uh, middle finger away. So this would be, uh, I guess you can call it a D6 uh, flat 9, if you want to. <laughs> and then back to A, while you place just the, the A chord, then E, A shape, just the 
top two strings and then back to A. So the whole solo slowly for you would uh, sound like this. And he finished the second solo a little bit different, where he plays and I'm just playing A and he slides to what seems like a G chord but it's a, it's an E7 yeah? with an open E string and the D functions as the, as the flat 7 of the chord and the B is the 5. It's like playing a, E7 and back to A. And in the verse I would do the Travis picking while um, Scotty Moore never plays a strict bass pattern like this. Oh, this is rather Chad Atkins where um, Travis would or play like this. So Scotty is more random and it's really hard to duplicate. Uh, that's why I use this style. And I have a full um, Travis picking course on Udemy which you can pick up for just uh, 15 euro and the link is down in the description. It's, uh, it's about one and a half to two hours long with lots of taps, rockabilly chords uh, some theory. It starts very slowly and then at the end you're able to play the cannonball rack. So that's it for today. Next is DuckTale by Joe Clay. <laughs>